everyone, this is V, and welcome back to Critical Healing Moment. This is the second video in my Plan With Me Unscripted series where I set up my monthly bullet journal spread and talk about something that I've been thinking about and what's been on my mind lately. So today I really had a hard time picking what I wanted to talk about. Um, I feel like there have been a lot of things that I've been thinking about, but some of them are not fully formed thoughts yet and things that I want to make other more produced videos on. So I decided to talk about self-care, community care, and routines since routine is something that I've been trying out more lately. And you will see a bullet journal spread where I try to create new routines for myself. Also want to start off by saying that I am trying a new technique in my bullet journal this month. I've been playing around with watercolor and honestly, I really like how this whole month turned out. So please watch until the end. There are some pretty, I think in my opinion, really cool spreads. Um, that may inspire you to do something different in your bullet journal. So today, what am I talking about? Self-care, community care, and routines. The reason why I want to talk about this is that there was a day a few weeks ago, or was it last week, where I realized that I wasn't really making decisions that really took care of myself. I spent some time thinking about you know, things I wanted to do to better take care of my mind, my body, and my spirit. And so I set up a new kind of goal morning routine and evening routine, which you'll see in a bit. Not something that I have successfully done as a habit yet, but it is a goal. This month, I also chose to include a quote from Ronnie Ware who wrote a book about the dying after working with um, people who were ill and dying. And the quote is, be courageous and live a life that your heart is guiding you toward. I felt like this quote really resonated with me in terms of self-care and community care because ultimately being able to pursue sort of a life course that you're very drawn towards and you feel a lot of purpose in and you feel in your intuition and your gut that is calling to you is in and of itself a form of self-care. I think that trying to force your body and your mind into a life that you're not meant to live is detrimental to your mental health. And so um, I, I came across this quote in um, on Pinterest and I also listened to a podcast where the um, person, the quote is by Bronnie Ware, talks about her experiences um, working with the dying and her observations, which she wrote a book about in terms of things that people wish um, that they did in their lives uh, in their last moments. So yeah, I, um, I had a day uh, a few weeks ago and I was like, I need to get my act together. So the day afterwards, I had an errand to run and decided to also take a stop into a um, little regional park we have and did a little bit of hiking in the trails um, just because I was I was running an errand and I was in the neighborhood. So, and that was really fantastic. Um, I used a lot of that time to sort of think through some of these ideas that I had around like healing and self-care and community care. And I also, I, I take my bullet journal with me like almost everywhere. So I took it with me and I sat in the forest and completed my self-care plan which I had still left blank um, after setting up my the beginning collections of my bullet journal spreads. 
um, a few months ago. So um, yeah, those things, uh, no bullet journaler is perfect. I think that sometimes people take forever to fill out those collections in the beginning and I am also, you know, one of those. There are some collections that I never fill out that I thought would be cool. Anyways, use that time, filled out things, um, and you can check out my other video to see what my setup kind of looks like. And then also I decided that after doing that in the morning, this is the morning, it's like before noon, decided that I really like this experience of taking walks in the morning and taking going hiking in the morning. And so I decided that I wanted to have that be a part of my daily routine. So you see here, this is what I'm setting up right now. This is my new morning and evening routine. And so um, I have tried out the morning routine for a few days. Um, as of today, while I am recording this, I have for two days not completed the whole morning routine. And so it's definitely a habit I want to complete and or you know be have be a part of my life, but it's going to need some practice and discipline. And I also wanted to have an evening routine because as some folks may say, your morning routine starts the evening before because in order for me to get up in time to do a daily walk, I'll need to go to bed earlier and unplug from some technology. So yeah, that's my plan. A couple few things that are good. I have found a really nice spot locally in my neighborhood that I like to walk in and really it's like a secret little oasis. Um, I've taken a trip there, like stopped by there on my walks twice this week. Um, and I've also started to read more. So I'm still in the middle of finishing this book that I've been reading for a while. And it is called When Heaven and Earth Change Places by Lei Hayslip. It's a memoir of a woman who grew up during the Vietnam War. And um, yeah, I have this other um, agenda diary thing um, that is dated um, that my partner gifted to me. And since I use a bullet journal, well, I, I don't need another journal. I used to use it for work, but I decided to use it as a reading log. So I'm trying to fill out, you know, I think it's keeping me motivated to fill out the reading log and how much I'm reading in terms of time and pages. So yeah, I'm gonna do another video to give a little update on that in a few weeks. So yeah, it's been cool to be able to fill that out and read you know, at least 20 minutes a few days a week, um, even though I'm trying to do it every day. There is that. And so I think something that comes up a lot in conversations about self-care is, is, well, I think something that tends to happen in conversations about self-care is that it's a very individual process that, you know, you're required to take time away from people and completely be in isolation and work on things. And I think that there are times when that is helpful, but I also think that as humans, as social animals, we need to be with other people. And so I think it's really depriving yourself of something that you need, um, that you may need the most out of everything to disconnect from other people in the pursuit of self-care. And so I think that's where community care comes in. And I, I'm working on something where I have to kind of think through like, what does self-care look like? What does community care look like? And I really think that community care is the process of witnessing someone in their healing. Um, and that's why you can never do it alone. I think you always need some sort of support network to be there with you, to witness, to help you process. And, and I think that can be done, you know, traditionally it's done in a formal sort of therapy space, even group therapy, I mean, which you can consider maybe community care, but they're still under the guidance of a professional. But I do think that, um, you know, when the skills are 
When people in your community and your network are equipped with the skills to take care of each other, that community care can be possible. And I also think that like how in, in more clinical spaces, there are ethics and there are guidelines and there are structures in place to kind of have accountability. Well, ideally there are those things um, when something goes wrong. Um, you know, a process such as, for example, if your therapist does something that upsets you, they should have a process in order to address that, process that, and then change their own behavior and how they interact. And I think that is not only for those spaces alone, but also for our community care spaces. What are our processes to being able to resolve our conflicts, to really address things that make us uncomfortable in spaces that are supposed to take care of us. So, yeah, I've been having lots of conversations about this lately in organizing spaces that I'm a part of, and it's honestly truly exciting for these conversations to be happening because so much harm can actually be done in places that are meant to do good. I obviously have a lot of familiarity with this in terms of my workplace, um, a place that is, has a good mission. Um, my former work, my former workplace, a place that has a good mission and wants to benefit people in the community can also replicate harm when there are no processes to address things when there is harm done within the community, Um, which required me to create boundaries and leave. But I'll just pause here from talking because I think, you know, as the video has gone on, you'll have noticed that there are times when I've messed up in my journal and I've showed you how to kind of correct mistakes. So even over the painted parts, um, when I've messed up and I misspell things all the time, using a white gel pen to cover that over and then also using a pink gel pen or, you know, one that matches the background to sort of like erase and then redraw it with a another pen. Going back to routines for a little bit, um, because I forgot to talk about this earlier, is that the reason why I think routine is so important is because our bodies are always in some sort of cycle, whether it is a daily cycle, a yearly cycle, um, cycles that are in alignment with different forces in nature. That means that regularity is so important for our bodies. And so routines can really help with that um, in, in sort of like human behavior in social environment kind of lingo, you know. Um, we're always searching for homeostasis within ourselves and within our environment. So routines, super important. Um, And that's why I'm trying to create routine for myself so that I can sort of feel better and more grounded um, in my environment. And, um, oh, so this is the end and here is my spread. I absolutely love what this looks like and I hope you enjoyed this Plan With Me Unscripted. Mm